Okay, uh, welcome to the second session for this evening. This is going to be an exciting uh, afternoon. Uh, I would like to invite uh, Dato Dr. Balanathan. He is the president of the Obstetrical and Gynecological Society of Malaysia. He's also the head of department of the Obstetrical and Gynecological Hospital, which is uh, the, the department of ONG in the Sebrang Jaya Hospital. He's a reproductive medicine consultant at the uh, hospital Sebrang Jaya, laparoscopic gynecological surgeon as well for the coordinator for Penang, honorary lecturer for the postgraduate ONG students uh, for USM and UKM. Let us welcome Dr. Bala. Uh, our second um, um, uh, co-chair is uh, none other than Dr. Reli, um, Januari Primariawan. Okay. Okay. Dr. Reli is uh, from Indonesia. He works in the department of OBGYN at the uh, Suotomo General Hospital uh, Medical School of Erlanga University, Surabaya, Indonesia. He's, pro he's a professional member of the uh, Inter uh, Indonesian Gynecological Endoscopic Society, APH, and also Aspire. He's a Chairman of the Fertility Endocrinology and Reproductive Division of the Department of OBGYN at the uh, Suatomo General Hospital, and also the Chairman of the Indonesian Permanent Contraceptive Organization. So let's put our hands together to our two chairmen who will be chairing the first session for this uh, afternoon. Okay, uh, thank you, Dr. Selva. Uh, next up is uh, Professor Jody Rodriguez. Uh, he's been the a member of the Functional Gynecology Society Oncology Unit and member of HIFU Unit since 2008 uh, at the Mutua Teresa University Hospital. 14 years of experience treating nearly 1,000 cases of gynecology disorder with US uh, ultrasound HIFU. Since 2016, Prof. Jody has been the head of HIFU Unit at the Mutua Teresa University Hospital and a board member of the ESG and MESG working group on non-surgical ablative therapy of benign uterine disease. And since 2020, he's the president of the benign uterine pathology committee at the same university hospital, a peer reviewer in several scientific journals, International Journal of Hyperthermia, Quantitative Imaging Medicine and Surgery, Korean Journal of Radiology, professor of the eye master in minimally invasive gynecological surgery with the topic ultrasound high food in the treatment of uterine fibrosis and adenomyces, and speakers at various courses and congress in gynecology, endoscopy surgery, and ultrasound therapy, both national and international, with the publication of some articles. Without further ado, I, have, I provide you with Prof. Jody Rodriguez. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Amazing show. I'm not sure this is the best moment to, 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 to do a lecture. Well, thank you very much uh, to the Dr. Selva and the organizing committee for inviting me to this uh, conference. And of course, thank you very much to our hey page and ISMIFS. E and of course, thank you very much to uh, Chongqing University, okay, for inviting me to the international workshop of HIFU tomorrow, okay? Right. Uh, the first. It's very important for me in this in this presentation, the fact because um, I have been asked to speak about our experience in treating uterine fibroids with high food, okay, and pregnancy outcomes. And the first thing I want to say is, you know, uterine fibroids are very prevalent and cause significant morbidity in women, okay. And of course, there is enough evidence about the, their negative impact on fertility being the sole cause of infertility in one to 3% of women and causing 7% of recurrent miscarriage, okay? It's a serious problem. In addition, uh, I must also take into account the age factor, okay? Modern societies have changed rapidly and currently there is a tendency to delay childbearing beyond the age of 32, mainly in Western countries, of course, and this situation combined with the increase of fibroids with age, leads us to a new scenario, which is the large number of older patients with uterine fibroids and problems conceiving, okay? Unfortunately, the advances in reproductive technologies cannot compensate for, for this issue, and this is a serious problem. Right now, 
Focusing on fibroids, there is a consensus that submucosal fibroids of any size and intramural fibroids distorting the uterine cavity have the most significant negative impact on fertility. On the other hand, some authors support the idea that intramural fibroids greater than two or, or greater than four centimeters, depending on the studies, even without cavity distortion, may also impair fertility. And that's because there are other mechanisms apart from the anatomic distortion that could lead to infertility as they increase uterine contractility, the impairment of endometrial and myometrial blood supply and hormonal changes induced by fibroids, which could impair gamete transport. Different problems of, of these fibroids can, can you see? Okay, a lot, a lot of them, these problems, all of them explain the infertility of women with small non-cavity intermural fibroids. In this line, some publications conclude that this type of fibroids, even small size, two centimeters, for example, really impact adversely on if outcomes. However, it also concludes that there is still no definite evidence to indicate routine myomectomy in these cases. We strongly believe that high food therapy, but it's not invasive nature, could also be a good treatment option for these patients. Okay, what is high food? You know, what, what, does, what does it work and what can it offer our patients? The therapeutic principles are the following. High intensity ultrasound waves are delivered by the high food transducer. They travel safely through adjacent tissues to arrive and focus onto the focal spot, okay, the focal point inside the body. And suddenly a small area of selected tissue is heated between 70 to 100 degrees, resulting in a coagulative necrosis. As you can see in the images, focal point is guided by real-time ultrasound, okay, in, in this case, in this technique. Okay, um, but what are the main advantages of this technique? What makes it so different from other therapies, from surgery, for example, principally? The first thing there is, is there is never bleeding or infection, typically complications of conventional surgery, not in this case. There is only mild postoperative pain. The procedure is done under conscious sedation. All patients are discharged between three and five hours after treatment in our hospital. 100% of patients are uh, outpatient procedures, procedures, and patients have a faster recovery after HIFU compared to, to surgery, of course. And very importantly, no skin or uterine scars, which is of a special interest in women with gestational desire. And because that's because HIFU achieves ablation of uterine fibroids without damaging the surrounding myometrium, okay? There is conservation of the myometric, myometrical properties of the myometrium, sorry, biomechanical properties of the myometrium are preserved. HIFO also preserves ovarian and endometrial function. We have some studies that show no significant difference between uh, the anti-murian hormone levels before and after treatment. And in this other prospective study on the right from 2020, Melko Zerova et al. observed no significant changes in molecular and tissue markers of endometrial receptivity, okay? No differences in women undergoing high population for uterine, for uterine fibroids. Okay, for me, this simple slide is very, very, very important, okay? In my opinion, the objectives of high ablation of uterine fibroids in women with gestational desire are both. On the one hand, to achieve the inactivation of the hormonal and vascular function of fibroids, which will be achieved immediately on the same day of the treatment of the on, on, the, on the same day of the high food treatment, thanks to the total necrosis of the fibroid, okay? This is the first goal. And the second goal, the second objective of this technique is to shrink the fibroid, is to shrink the fibroid treated in order to normalize the uterine cavity, the uterine anatomy, especially important in submucosal fibroids, of course. But both things seek to increase the chances of obtaining a safe pregnancy without the complications of surgery, okay? Logically, the greater the, the ablation of the fibroid, 
the greater its shrinkage during follow-up. We already have several publications with good pregnancy outcomes after high flow treatment, large series with uh, high gestation rates, obtaining full-term pregnancies with uh, normal delivery, and of course, with, without complications, no cases of uterine raptor or abnormal placentation in, in all of these publications. Okay, our experience is not so much different from all these publications. In our retrospective study, we include 560 women with symptomatic uterine fibroids who underwent ultrasound guide HIFO between 2008 and 2018. Um, 71 pregnancies of 55 patients have been obtained, which is, to our knowledge, the longest series uh, of pregnancies after high food treatment in a Western country. The pregnancy rate was 30, 34%, which is not bad if we co compare it with other treatments. Among the 71 pregnancies, there were 43 successful deliveries, including a natural twin gestation, with an incidence of cesarean section very low of 43%, which was much lower than in patients undergoing myomectomy or uterine artery embolization, or in those reported by other authors after ultrasound guy HIFO. Okay, in relation to the 55 women who became pregnant, more than a half, 55%, I can point out, 55% were at least 36 years old at the time of treatment. 80% were naliparous women, okay? And we must highlight that 33% had primary or secondary sterility, and 18%, 18% had at least one miscarriage before high full treatment. Okay, the rate of preterm pre delivery was 9%, only four cases, which is lower than in series of pregnancies with uh, untreated fibroids, with untreated fibroids, or pregnancies following uterine artery embolization. The mean birth weight of the 44 newborns was three kilograms. Seven of them were low birth weight infants. This that you see here, okay? And except for the 1.4 kilogram baby who was born with a previously diagnosed tetralogy of fallot and intrauterine growth, uh, intrauterine growth restriction, the remaining newborns, 98%, developed develop well without complications during postpartum and breastfeeding. Okay, these are the complications detected during, during pregnancy. Uh, one preterm labor, two cases of placenta previa, and two cases of preterm premature rupture of membranes, okay? And during delivery, uh, two cases of emergency cesarean section, for, in one case for fetal bradycardia and the other for MRH associated with placenta previa, and three cases of retained placenta with manual removal, and finally, one case of severe preeclampsia, okay? Not so much uh, complications. And the results were achieved in women with a medium maximum diameter of treated fibroid of 6.4 centimeters and a non-perfuse volume ratio of 76%, which is higher than that reported in most series of, of high, high, high food treatment, okay? 6.4 centimeters in these patients. And these are some, some of the cases we have treated. We can treat with HIFO uh, different fibroids of different locations, it's not a problem. At the beginning, for example, submucosal fibroids, pedinculated submucosal fibroids were contraindicated for this technique, but now we are treating all the, five, all the locations in these cases. For example, this FIGO type zero, the fibroid is occupied all the whole cavity, okay? And here we have the completely abrasion. This is a magnetic resonance image after, after treatment. And six months uh, later, the, the, the fibroid completely disappear. And two months, two months after this, this MRI, this uh, control MRI, um, um, okay, with good pregnancy results. Two pregnancies, spontaneous pregnancies with no problems in the perinatal moment, okay. This is a transmural, oh, sorry, it's a FIGO type 2, 4 fibroid, very big fibroid, 10 centimeters. Um, okay, this fibroid successfully, was successfully treated with HIFU and with hist hysteroscopic resection of the remaining myoma fragment. 
here, six months later, this is six months later, okay, and after we do the, the, um, the hysteroscopic resection, and this is a hysteroscopic diagnosis, hysteroscopic with a completely normal cavity, and okay, three months later, the, we, the, 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 okay, we have the spontaneous pregnancies with a vaginal delivery, three kilograms maybe, no problem. And okay, cases of polymyomatosis here, well, a big fibroid, okay, another fibroid of five centimeters, side mucosal fibroid. And the side mucosal fibroid that you see here disappear completely eight months after HIFU. And just at that moment when the fibroid disappeared, um, the patient underwent a successful in vitro fertilization and got a full term pregnancy, okay. Okay, as a conclusion, so take home messages. Uterine fibroids can negatively affect fertility and increase the risk of a specific pregnancy complications. There are some advantages, okay, that we have considered. And according to our experience, this technique is effective and safe to treat uh, uterine fibroids. Patients undergoing uteros, ultra, ultrasound guide high for treatment uh, can achieve full term pregnancies with no complications or few complications. And okay, due to this not invasive nature, sorry. Um, okay, probably is the first option in women with uterine fibroids and gestational desire with many advantages, okay? In some cases, HIFU could even improve the fertility, could even improve, okay, we, we have to demonstrate it, of patients with a history of primary or secondary infertility in our series, 30% with with this history, okay? But we need prospective randomized studies to confirm these observations. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, Professor Jordi, yes, um, uh, I would just want, um, uh, Dr. Hon from Hong Kong, I just want to ask for the spontaneous pregnancy after HIFU, uh, is it uh, you should let it after three months or six months or is it, um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, or you, you ask them not to be pregnant immediately after yeah. HIFU? Okay, it depends on the type of fibroid, okay, the fibroid, okay. For example, in, in submucosal fibroids, of course, we need a normal cavity, completely normal cavity, uterine cavity, okay? And perhaps, for example, in a fibroid of uh, fi fibroid FIGO zero, zero, sometimes we treat as a, this case, but FIGO one, FIGO two, a fibroid of two, three centimeters, probably in three months or six months, we have a normal cavity. In this moment, we recommend to, to, to try to get pregnant, okay? For example, in intramural fibroids, FIGO type three, FIGO type four, for me, it's not necessary to wait so many times. Why? Uterine cavity is normal in FIGO three, FIGO four, okay? And we have ablated, we, we have done ablation of the fibroid, okay? But we don't need to shrink the fibroid in this case, in intramural fibroids. It's my opinion, I cannot demonstrate, but probably in intramural fibroids, it's not necessary to wait so much time. Probably in fibroids of three, four, five centimeters, not waiting time, in fibroids, six, seven, eight centimeters with normal cavity, probably it's better to wait a waiting time of three months, six months to shrink the fibroid in biggest, in, in bigger fibroids, okay? So for the submucosal fibroid, um, do you, uh, you say uh, it, you do the hysteroscopy to um, demonstrate a normal cavity for submucosal fibroid after high food? you see as a normal cavity and then you tell the patient or you can try pregnant. How about um, instead of a, a diagnostic hysteroscopy, we use the saline sonogram, put in saline and, and or see the, is it possible to demonstrate as a normal cavity? Yes, and, it's possible to do a hysteroscopic yeah, diagnosis, a diagnostic hysteroscopic to demonstrate normal cavity, but I think with the with a ultrasound is enough to, to, to demonstrate a normal cavity. You have, we have a two, 2D and 3D ultrasound. Okay, for me is enough. 
in difficult cases or sometimes in FIGO type three near to the cavity, if the ultrasound is not enough, you can do a stereoscopic to, okay, to demonstrate. Thank you, Prof. Uh, Jordi. I'm Indra from Indonesia. I want to ask you, uh, did you give any uh, medication after the patient success, success the high flu? Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, some some of us give uh, anti GnRH analog mm -hmm. to reduce the recurrency. What mm -hmm. about your opinion? Thank you. I don't I don't give any any any, any treatment for the moment. If the if the treatment has been success, um, no medication after high flu. Only the high flu ablation and shrinkage of the fibroids in three, six months, okay? No. Perhaps in some cases with um, only a number of volume of, for example, 80% or 60% or, yes, partial results, no? In these cases, probably it's important to give GnRH analogs, okay. But okay. in cases, very good cases, no perfusion volume of 100%, 80%. Okay, waiting, wait, waiting in time and three months, three, six months. And... Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, um, Prof. Jordi, there's an online question here. How about outcome of high flu in adenomyces with infertility? Sorry, sorry, can you repeat slowly? Okay, how about outcome of high flu in adenomyces with infertility? Okay, I think Dr. Selva in the, <laughs> in the next presentation. I will explain you, man. Okay, I can I, tell them. I'll yes, answer. I, okay, I have experience, but not. I think not so much experience as a doctor. Okay, Stella, I, think... but I can answer the question. Um, okay, but it's a different tissue. Adenomyosis is a very different tissue than fibroids. Okay, it's very high vascularized tissue, and sometimes it's necessary to, uh, okay, to to high to sonicate sonication to sonicate um, with high intensity. In, a, in, in different points of the adenomyosis, um, carefully with the endometrium, carefully with the serosa, but okay, um, yes, we can treat adenomyosis focal and diffuse adenomyosis to improve symptoms. Very challenge this pathology, okay? It's very difficult. This is it? Yeah. Yes, is it? Okay, uh, there's still some online questions yeah. there. Um, is there a, a prospective randomized trial underway at Madhua Teresa Hospital? Sorry, is there a, any a prospective randomized trial? No, in this case, okay. no, yeah, you don't have. Okay, uh, prospective randomized okay. Trial. there's one more in here. The <laughs> in doing HIFU on a submucosal fibro in a patient with infertility, will it not cause damage on the endometrium and thereby affecting the long run, the, in the long run, the chances of pregnancy? It's a good question, okay. Um, we, in, in all the cases we have done, um, we don't have any case of amenorrhea, for example. No cases of amenorrhea, never, never. All the patients have menstruation one month uh, later, okay? Um, but I cannot demonstrate there are some studies about the endometrial receptivity with no alterations, okay? But I don't have studies to, to compute. It's impossible to have a lesion in the endometrium. But, but for the moment, patients of 20 years, 40 years, 40 years, no problem with endometrium, never. I mean, no amenorrheas, okay? No heavy menstrual bleeding after high flu or problems related to the, close to the, the, the endometrium. Thank you very much for your presentation. Dr. Wasuna from Kenya. What's your experience with parasitic, if any, or uh, pedunculated myomas? Thank you. Particulated or? Parasitic. Parasitic. Yeah, no, parasitic, no. no, no. Now, with pedunculated, I have some cases of pedunculated fibroids, okay. And uh, tomorrow I will exp uh, explain some cases about this one in the, the workshop. But, okay, it's more difficult to ablate these cases because are technically a, a little more difficult, but it's possible to treat. That's because the pedunculated fibroids are involved. Yeah, yes, it is, there is no adjacent tissue 
my nora nora myometrium is bowels <laughs> bowel around the and, and okay carefully in these cases okay and in so many cases we have to press to compress the abdominal wall during treatment and this compression uh, mobilize the the fibroid yes and sometimes okay it's difficult yes to maintain the same point ever and ever but finally we have very good results with um, okay, in in pedunculated uh, fibroids, um, some mucosal pedunculated and subserosal pedunculated, both cases. Yeah. Just as a follow up, for that kind of a fibroid, um, seeing that as you say this ball around, have you had to adjust the amount of intensity just to be safer? Or what, what do you do in terms of safety for one of those pedunculated fibroids with gut around it? Okay, sorry, you are uh, asking about why surgery. So, no, no, no. So when you're doing HIFU on a pedunculated fibroid and perhaps there is intestines around, gut around it, have you had to adjust the amount of intensity of, uh, of, of yeah. just to be safe? Yeah, no, yes, probably we adjust the, the intensity, but the, the intensity is adjusted uh, depending on the grayscale changes. Not, no, because if finally you have the, the focal point perfect visible, you have a very good view of the of the fibroid. Okay, we can we can trade with a um, with a one centimeter from the from the serosa. Okay, okay, no problem. The power is adjusted uh, depending on the grayscale changes uh, and other and other factors, but not yeah. Thank you, Prof. Jody, for the lecture. I am Dr. Yen from Indonesia. I have a question, Prof. The first one, how uh, you measure the fibro width by two dimension of ultrasound or by three dimensional ultrasound? And my uh, second question is, what is actually the decreased uh, target size of the fibro width? Uh, the shrinkage, Prof. 70% or 80%, what is the cutoff? until we can let the patient get pregnant spontaneously or by the ARP. Thank yes. you, Prof. The second question is, is similar to the uh, yeah, I asked before, because it's not a cutage, it is not a, uh, exactly percentage of the shrinkage, not. If it depends of the cavity distortion or not cavity distortion, and uh, uh, is the, the, um, at the beginning, the fibroid, how much, how much is it? Okay, for example, um, the same question in the, for example, um, seven centimeters fibroid, we can wait, okay, so probably three, six months to, to get pregnant, okay, patients, but, but it's not a cutoff, no, no, in the case, no. It's normal cavity, okay, so principle, the uterine normal cavity. And the first question is about the 3D and 2D ultrasound. The measure. Yeah, you measure the yeah. two dimension or, or the volume of the myoma. Yeah, we, we do a ultrasound follow-up uh, every three months, at three, six, 12 months and annually to calculate the, the volume of the fibroid in, in, um, in, two, in 2D, in 2D, yeah. Not 3D for the moment, okay, in 2D. The, after treatment, we, of course, we do a MRI with contrast, okay, to evaluate the number of his volume, but three, six, and 12 months with ultrasound to the ultrasound, yeah. More questions? <laughs> okay, if there's no questions from the floor, thank you, Prof. Jody, for a very entertaining lecture.